welcome to Camel City Chat. I'm your host, John McPherson, and I am here with the Reverend Dr. Senator Paul Lowe. You going to be okay with me saying all that? Well, I guess I have to be at this point. Because I've said it. You said who, it. Who actually, I think, in a public setting would admit that we're friends. Oh, yes. Yeah. You're a great guy. Yeah. I'm yeah. so excited that you agreed to do this. This means so much to me. You are such a supporter of... Um, Home ownership and, and, and stuff we've met through uh, different events when uh, the realtors come over to Raleigh. And um, we have so much in common uh, that it's it's kind of funny as, as we've talked. I mean, you, I was once an elected official. You're an elected official. Um, I'm a minister. You're a minister. I got mine online. You, oh wait, no, you actually went to school to get yours. Yeah, I went to school. I'm, I'm a doctor. I got mine online. I think I paid 25 bucks for it. You actually went to yeah, school. Yeah, it was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah a lot of money. <laughs> and, and we're going to talk about all this stuff. We also have some fraternal uh, affiliations that we have in common and stuff like that. So I want to get people to understand who you are and, uh, and why they should vote for you. Um, and, hey, by the way, you know we are different political parties. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. Yeah. I still vote. I'm gonna vote I, for you. Okay. Well, I and I became that. in your district too. Did you know that? No. Yeah. I guess I told everybody what my party is, but I, I just vote for the people, not the party. It's okay. Yeah. So you know, when I first got into this job, um, uh, uh, with with working with you as your SPC, mm-hmm. I wasn't in your district. And then when they rerouted Me. everything, I'm now in your mm-hmm. district. Well, I'm glad to have you. Well, and and I'm glad that I get to vote for you because I like you. And the other thing is though is um, now you have to be nicer to me because I'm a constituent. Not going to happen. That'll be... Uh, I, I, you struggle. You know me and your your father and uh, you, yeah, your wife, dad. we all have a good relationship. Yeah, right. So I, I, may, I, may, I may have to talk to them okay. and just right. see, see what they're saying. So we got three questions, <laughs> and you know what those are. Okay. We ask them every time we have a guest on Camel City Chat. Uh, before we get to the big questions, we have to ask people to find us on uh, Facebook or, or, or YouTube. Uh, be sure to <clears> subscribe <throat> to us on YouTube. Um, like the channel. If you're listening to us on uh, Spotify or iTunes, you know, shout out to us and please let us know. Um, you are uh, uh, you're our you're lucky number eleven. We've done ten uh, ten episodes. Oh wow! And so uh, we we appreciate you being here. And so the first question: Where are you from, and how long have you been in Winston Salem? Okay, I'm a native of Seattle, Washington. That's where I was born and raised. Went to the public schools out there, and um, I've been in Winston for the last 29 years. Okay, so um, Seattle is not faring well right now. Obviously, as, well, there's, as there's some zero. challenges that, out there, but they seem to be coming along well. I talked yeah. to my mother and talked to my father, and they seem to be doing quite well. Are they in place? Yes. Okay, so I I had the and you know we talked about. The coronavirus, as, as things change and what's going on, I mean, what we would talk about today could be totally different uh, when we air um, uh, next week. So um, what I will tell you is I had the weirdest experience of my life this week, and you know my dad. I went to my dad's house. He needed some milk. He's 95. I got the bottle of milk. As I was walking out, I grabbed a, a wipe for the carts. I wiped down the handle of the milk in the bag. I then got to my dad's house and used that wipe and the bag to take the milk out of the bag and place on his front porch, knocked on his door, stepped back like 10 feet, let him come to the door and get it and tell my dad I loved him through a glass pane. Mm. That's hard. Wow. You know, you know, you see me. Every time I see my dad, I kiss him on the forehead. Yeah. But we have to be respectful of what they've sent us down through, not only our president, but our governor and -hmm. and things like that. And um, it's, uh, it's some scary stuff. I think that we're we are living in maybe some challenging times. I think that might be a good way to say it. Right. But I think we'll get through it. I do I too. I think we'll get through it. Um, and matter of fact, I know we'll get through it. Um, I think the biggest things is to to be careful in terms of you know the distance you are from people. It's a respiratory virus. Uh, wash your hands often because it's a respiratory virus. Uh, the virus is doing everything it can to get to your respiratory system. So we have to be careful um, in terms of, you know, touching people. Is probably we've been practicing shaking hands all of our all of our lives. Now we might have to touch Elbow elbows, yep. you know. And that's what we do uh, while we're dealing with this virus. I think we're gonna, like I said, I think we're going to get through this. But one of the things that we have to be open to is change. Things are kind of fluid right now. We're, we're working on 
what we can do because a lot of people might be unemployed for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really serious. Um, it puts a lot of people in extremely scary situations. So we're going to have to deal with that, um, make sure people get unemployment insurance and other kinds of things, along with beefing up whatever needs to be done with uh, the Department, State Department of Health and Human Services. I met with the group on last night, and our local Health and Human Services are doing a bang-up job and our state uh, secretary, Dr. Mandy Cohen, she's doing a wonderful job and I'm very appreciative to the work that she's doing. So that as we begin to, to work on this testing, last week this time testing was less, we were capable of doing testing for less than 250 people. Now is over a few thousand that we'll be able to test. Mm -hmm. And that's extremely important because we're working on mitigation. You know, this whole thing of mitigation is extremely important right now because we've got to find a way to take care of those that are sick. We've got to do what is necessary to make sure that our hospitals can handle the capacity. Um, although we don't have a vaccine, we are able to treat some of the symptoms, you know, high fever and these kinds of things. So I think that we're on a good road. I think it's going to be, um, it. we don't know how long this is going to last, but I think that if we pull together and look at the things that we have to do for this period to make sure everybody is well so we save lives. Yeah, no, I mean, and yeah, you know, that's why you and I are friends. Uh, uh, not only in in the genre that we were, we get to, sure. you know, we get this through the realtor things, but also we have pretty similar views. I mean, you got to be socially responsible. You got to take care of people. And you know, one of the things that we we always ask is the next thing, the next question, and that's our restaurant workers. It's scary. You know, you got to think about that. It's really, really scary. And you know, one of the things that we we take for granted is entertainment. Restaurants, that's part of the entertainment yep. world. Our restaurants and bars or eateries, um, those are something that we, we do yeah. as, as Americans. We, we do it a lot. Yeah. We didn't realize how much we do it until now everybody has to cook at home. Yep. You know, um, I mean, it's little simple things. Um, but those people that work in those spaces... Um, you know, they live off tips and there's other kinds of economies, right. you know, some people call it the gig economy where right. people are doing different kinds of things. Um, we have, um, the opera, right? Piedmont opera is supposed to be doing some stuff. Won't be able to do a stuff. Well, you got river musicians, run. river cow. run, uh, stage hands, river run, musicians, all these kinds of people that work. Now, what's interesting when I stop to think about some of these things that happen, because all of this could send us into hopefully not a depression. Right. That's what we're hoping, you know. We don't want that to happen. But entertainment in all of its genres has been between our faith and entertainment. Right. Those have been kind of the two things that have brought us through a whole lot of stuff. Right. Our faith on one hand, entertainment on the other. Faith, entertainment. And right now, we can't even come together. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. To do either one. You know, there's been restrictions put on these kinds of things. So this is going to be uh, a new challenge. Right. That we haven't experienced before. Um, our... our, our Houses or homes of faith, right. um, we have to look at how we do that in a different manner. And I, I don't come back to that. I don't. Question. I don't have any answers that I can give to that or care to give at this time because it's yet unfolding. I do want to come back to that because I, I also see it as an opportunity for churches, um, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute with with regards to getting to more people. Um, so let's do this. What's your favorite place to eat? And you're allowed to take the mayor's the mayor's route and say, "Well, the mayor's you know, there." 
Okay, there's two places I eat on the regular basis. Two right. places I like to eat. One is sweet potatoes on Trade Street. Who doesn't like to eat at sweet potatoes, okay, right? And those are those are good friends, and, yep. and they do a great job over there. So I love to go to sweet potatoes and eat. The second place well, I like to go eat a lot is um, Village Tavern right. in Ronaldo Village. Yeah. And the third place that I'll give a shout out that I eat a lot, me and my wife eat a lot, is uh, West End Cafe. Those three places That's we, we eat at. You? Yeah, we eat at those three places a lot. All right. Okay, cool. I mean, then they're good places. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, um, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting, you know, uh, the young Cardinal Adam just opened downtown, and, and Algernon Cash was across the street at Jeffrey Adams, and was talking about, you know, everyone was like, what are you doing out eating? He's like, this may be the last time I eat in a restaurant. Uh-huh. Um, and so... My thing is, is today after this, it's time for lunch. I'm going to run over and probably go through a friend of mine's restaurant and order takeout. And I'm, I'm really going to try and get it to where we try to take one meal out a day, even though we might not normally have done that, just to try and get some business into some of these local places. And I challenge everybody to continue to do that. Yeah. Yesterday I cooked. Yep. Yeah, I did the traditional. Yeah. I did I did. And I know that you I, cooked. Did yeah, you see what I put yeah, on your Facebook yeah, page? Yeah, I mean, you didn't it was bring a, me anything. Uh, well, you should have told me. I, I said it. I said it on Facebook. You did. Bring some tomorrow. Oh, oh, okay. Well, it, and the, what, corn, what the corn was beef was wonderful. That's okay. And That's the what cabbage. I was. Yeah. And you know, it was it, it, with a uh, with carrots. What are you, Paul and, Olo now? And, uh, you got uh, the Olo. Well, you like got to cook. You got to yeah, cook. It was good. I love cooking. I bet you. I hate cleaning up. My wife says, but I love cooking. I'm in trouble for that all the time too. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing to do when you're in the district? Because, you know, obviously you have to go. I mean, I like meeting people. One thing I enjoy, probably the biggest thing I enjoy is going around to the schools. I was going to say, talking reading to, to the kids. kids. Oh, oh I like, I like, I like, I like doing the kids thing. Cool. All right. I like reading to the kids and stuff like that. Well, you are running for office, so I'm going to give yes. you a plug. All right. So I want everybody, if you would right now, what we're going to do is we're going to show your website Paul Lowe for NC.com. Again, Paul Lowe for NC.com. Check that page out. And uh, um, that it, this, this is going to tie into the church thing here in a second, okay? Okay. So one of the great things about your website is, is that I can go on there and make a contribution to you. Yes. And I told you that. I mean, that's something you can and and I mean, you just go on there and make a contribution, get Paul elected again. Appreciate this it. This brings oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for what you do for us. This brings me to what I was talking about earlier is you're you are a sitting reverend. You are the the reverend yes. for Shiloh Baptist over on 12th Street. And I know that right now it's you know, as we're moving forward, you and I've had discussions you're going to do some things video, but as churches move forward, I think now the churches that have been very, um, let's say, non-denominational, um, have been, you know, always with praise worship and things like that, have always had, like, that outreach that traditional churches haven't. What I'm starting to see is, as traditional churches are now starting to see the, uh, the impact of video, and I'm hoping that it's going to, in a sense, put people back in your pews. And what I mean by that is, is if we can get video at Shiloh up and running and an opportunity for somebody to donate, then, you know, I say it all the time. You don't have to say it. A church is a business. You know, it is a business. It has to have money coming in. And with people not coming in the church, you're losing on some of that business. Um, and so I'm hoping. I have friends that have been in Nashville and in bars, and they've got a little donate button if you want to tip the bar. I mean, tip the. Sure. Uh, them. Uh, if there's a way that we can get that going for churches, I think that's going to help out. We're pushing people to go to restaurants and get takeout. Now I'm saying go to your church and make a donation. Yes. Um, so, so uh, let let's start now. Are you ready? I mean, we've been talking about everything. So you were working in the community, which kind of uh, I told you you're a community organizer. Well, what, and what I mean, what I mean when I say that is you're allowed to smack me. There, I, I probably get more viewers. At, John, at you're fine. You're fine. I know. I, know. Um, I think there's all kinds of community concerns, and I think that ministry is what we do outside of the church, not so much what we do inside of the church and um, in terms of helping people uh, grow and helping people be the best them that they can be. Right. Um, I think that's that's the work of the church. Um, and whether it's helping children with reading or, or helping old people have a more productive life, uh, in their senior years, I think those are all things that we do to help our community 
be better. Whether or if it could be something as simple as um, you've got a dangerous corner, it just needs a stoplight, right? And you need to talk to your city council person right. to see how those kinds of things can be done. Those are that's working in the community. Um, so working in the community can be a lot of things, and uh, I'm not talking about community organizing right. per se. So. <laughs> So you're the Reverend of Shiloh Baptist, all right? Yes. We're sitting there, and um, what makes you decide, hey, I, I, I want to represent not only my congregation, but my city as a, as a state senator? One thing kind of led to another. You, you're working in one venue, and while right. you're working in one venue, it just expands. Right. And that's how it happened. So, man, I can, I can maybe make a difference here. And so you ran. So how long, how many terms are we in now? How long have you been in? Three. So you're in three terms, and they're two years each? Yes. Okay, so we've been in six years. You're running for election for your for seven and eight. Um, and uh, I, I like to say there's there's several things that you've worked on. And, and, and what I like about Paul is I went and called on him as a representative of the realtors and said, hey, you know, these are our three talking points. And you're like, uh, I sponsored that. Um, I already voted for that. What is this? And you get on the phone, and it's about uh, DOT. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, your buddy's like the number two or three person at DOT or something like that, and, and, and you and I are having a conversation with him, and he's going, Paul, this is going to be difficult for us to do. And you're like, okay, all right. And, uh, you know, we, we heard it, and um, we walked outside, and I had some other friends there, and they started to talk to you, and you're like, now, who'd you guys say sponsoring this? And then he's, and Paul looks at him and goes, they don't even have roads there. What are they talking about? Get get me involved. I'll help you out on that. <laughs> and and so now, what a wonderful thing it is that just a simple helping out. We now have what's called um, a private roads database, so that the the people that are buying homes know that their house is on a private road, right. and that information's there. Where before it's like I don't know. I think it is whatever that type of stuff. And that's because of the work that you've done. You also were huge in getting the. Um, uh, association health care passed, yes. and we appreciate that. What What's the bill that you are most proud of? Um, I hit you with that one. Sorry. I, I you did, I, I because you it's, it's not, um, sometimes it's not the bill per se. It's how you've been able to help someone. I remember there was a young lady that called our office and wrote to us her family, and she needed a transplant. Right. And, you know, with the feds, she was running into all kinds of roadblocks. She had been needing this transplant basically all her life. Right. Because she'd had diabetes, had to deal with diabetes issues her entire life. Right. And um, she ran into some problems. Her doctor said, well, hey, if you don't, if you can't get this done now, you're going to die, da 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 so she gets the opportunity to get a transplant, but Medicaid or Medicare and all that stuff is not doing what all it should do. My office was able to get involved. Handle and it. she got the transplant. That's awesome. Um, you know, so it's not always a bill per se, but it's the opportunity to help people um, that's what we're here for. That's what, you know, you know, and, you know, that what is that saying that service is uh, the rent we pl- pay for the air we breathe? You know, we're here to try to help someone else. So I see my work in the North Carolina Senate as nothing more than an extension of ministry. Um, I would agree. You know, just an extension of ministry. You know, okay, well, um, I think that people need to be home. It helps people. It helps our community if people become homeowners. Right. Well, things surround that. Knowing what roads you have, what public roads you have to get to your house. Right. Well, that's an important thing. It seems little when we talk about it, but it's really important. It's important <laughs> when the snowplow don't come. How about right. that? Yeah. You know, or or a lot of other things. You know, um, you know, I know some people that have to. They bought a house and the road went bad, and they had to pay for the road right. to lead to the house, and it's quite an expensive endeavor. Yeah, it's, it, it does get 
It does get expensive. So, and it's, so those and it's, are sometimes the, it's it's the snafu right before closing because the bank's like, "Would well, you have a, a road of agreement?" Sure, yeah. sure. So it's little things like that that we might take for granted that are important to the um, development of our communities and to the upbuilding of our communities because we want to see that everyone in our community wants access as a good citizen, access to health care, access to good streets and roads, access to a safe environment for their for their children and for themselves, access to good food. Um, all of these things help make up a community. Um, access to good neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, we all want that. So those are the things that we try to do. And I think that, you know, when we look at it, when I look at it from a ministry standpoint, it's just an extension of what I've been doing all along. Well, what I would say is I, my favorite quote is, is no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. You know a lot. Sure. I'll, I'll say that. I mean, you really do care. I think uh, what, what also is big to me is, is you're motivated by a challenge. If somebody tells you it can't be done, holy cow, I'm getting out of the way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's like you don't even wear – if you go see Senator Lowe, you're going to see him dressed in a suit with a pair of sneakers on because you're moving and ready to go and get it done. <laughs> and now I'd said earlier we have a lot of things in common, and, and, and I wanted to kind of touch on these because I think that I know they changed me as a man, and I, I think they probably did the same to you. So in 1890, my fraternity was founded at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. That? A few years later, 16, I believe, uh, 1906 to be exact, mm-hmm. uh, your fraternity was founded at Cornell. That's right. So um, you're an alpha? Alpha Phi Alpha yep. fraternity. And uh, a great fraternity. Um, Been and, a member uh, a long time. Yep, yeah, yeah. and you that was in Texas that you did that, right? Yes. At Bishop College. All right, and then uh, this is the one that, uh, that, that really changed me as well there, and that is uh, you're a Mason. Yes. You're a Freemason. How long have you been a Mason? 1982. Okay, I'm 1990, and uh, you know, great organizations that that help you understand how to be a better person and citizen. I think. Well, I think that uh, certainly in my case, it was just it was just another venue to do service. Right. That, that's right. how I looked at it. Another venue to do service. Both of them are, both of them are service organizations, yep. and it's about it's about service and about the opportunity to give back. Yep. I mean, I think that's the real that's the real thing. A lot of people. Um, don't want to give back. And I don't care where you are, what you've done in life. At at some point, you're going to need some help by someone or, you know. And um, there's something that I share, and I'll share it with you, John, that there's there's three things that I look at in life. All right, I'm going to write these down. What I can do without the help of others. What I can do with the help of others. All right. And what only God can do. You got to you got to keep a handle on that. That's pretty profound. I don't know if it's profound. I got it from somebody else, doctor. It's called rip off and duplicate R&D. <laughs> yeah. Right, I got, right, yeah. Right. yeah. Who'd you get Doc, it from? Dr. McD- uh, Dr. McDaniels, he was a he was an interim college president for Bishop College when I was there and he was from the uh Pensacola, Florida, and he, mm-hmm. he, I got it from him anyway, a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Bishop College undergrad. Yes. Then Union, uh, Virginia, Virginia Union, Union University. Virginia University for your master's in a sense yes. in theology. I know you wish you had that for your master's, like I do. What is that? You know what that is? That's what the is red, that? That's the Red Sea of Storm. That's that's. S U U know that's the helmet up there, buddy. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, you... yeah, man, I got my master's degree from there. Well, we'll 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 still. We'll, we'll you're talk a big about fan. We, yeah. Uh, every every time, yep. Yeah. Every time I see you've got a you've got the big ram on your. Uh, oh yeah, that, uh, that, your that's office. in my that's in my district. And then uh, and Drew University. Drew University. Got your doctorate. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you're married. Yes. You got a 38 year old son that does something with computers. Yes. All right. Something. something. You see why Stabler's here? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, you, yeah, go, there so you go. There you go. There you go. Just get somebody younger to help yeah. out. Um. You know, I, I think what 
what I've learned the most about you is, as I said, you like the challenge. You also like giving back. Do you feel that with what's going on with the coronavirus as we are now is a hard reset for giving back? Because it seems that people are really going out of their way to see that some people aren't as, as fortunate as they are right now. Well, I think that, you know, you've got, and we use this term a lot, you've got a really fluid situation now. Mm -hmm. People don't know what's going to happen from day to day. I've been um, in several conference calls and all kinds of briefings and debriefings um, every day right? for the last seven or eight days. Okay. Um, and people, a lot. some people are scared. They don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, I walk into the grocery store. Well, you know, there's no bread. There's no this. There's no that. Yeah. Um, you people, some toilet paper? Yeah, I mean, there you go. Yeah. You know, there you go. And and uh, people are scared. They're worried. Some people are out of work all of a sudden. And they weren't prepared for this. I was watching something on, um, I don't know, on television earlier today. And they said where they were talking about the average person isn't prepared for a $400 need to take place. I mean, they're not prepared for no. that. So, I mean, when you start looking at all these things, people are in a, they're, in, they're, they're, they're worried, they're nervous, uh, and we've got to find a way to band together and help everybody. We've got to find a way to, everybody's got to pitch in in some, right. in some kind of way. And if we don't, we will suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to, you know, do some giving. Right. You know, and everybody can't give in the same way. Everybody can't do the same thing, but we all have to do something. Yeah. Well, I want to show your website again, and this is for a different reason. Um, folks, I could, I could give you his official state website, but 30 minutes from now I'd still be reading it off. So the paulloforenc.com website is where I want to bring this up. Carolina is your L.A. or legislative yeah. assistant, and if you have a need or um, uh, you, you would like to uh, um, tell the, the senator that you'd like to help out or something like that, uh, here's their website. You can find it online, or you can call the office. You got the main number? What's just your main call, number? Just call the office. Okay, call the office. All right, we'll put it on the screen. I know it's 919-something. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we'll put that on there. Get in touch with Carolina and say, hey, you know, Senator Lowe, um, I can help with this, or I have extra toilet paper I'm willing to share with a neighbor, whatever, uh, that type of thing, and he'll, he'll, he'll get you connected. Okay? Yes. So... Caroline is wonderful. Now, Miss Christmas was with you for she, how long? For, she was with with me um, for right at five years. Okay, and she just retired, and yeah. she's doing well. And 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 please tell her we said hey because I will. One of the best phone calls you can make is calling your office. Hey, Miss Christmas, uh, can I see this? Is it, uh, John, hold on just a second. Let me see when it's available. And Caroline is great. She's great. Um, and uh, so looking forward to working with her. All right. So here is my question. I, I, this is a hard one. I'm, I, I, I feel like I prepped you up enough. So how do I get, no, it's not how do I get one of those pens. Uh, let, let me borrow that pen for a second. <laughs> so you're elected state senator, all right? So there are, how many senators are there? 50. So we have 100 counties, so on average you're representing two, people are representing two counties? Uh, it depends. It's based on population. Okay, all right. It's based on population. So someone may have five counties. May have right. five counties. And then there's three people in home. Charlotte or something right. like that. And what, you, what you're looking at is on average, you know, give or take, some thousands. Right. Uh, you're looking at about 192,000 people. So we have, Joyce is uh, this area as well. Part and who of else me. is in this area besides you two? Just us. Just two, two okay. For, right. As it relates to the Senate. Right. So for the Senate now, you come from, do you have, how much of Winston do you have? All of my, all of my, uh, my Senate district is inside the city. In the, inside the city, out yeah, to it, it, Louisville and Clemens. In parts of Louisville and parts of Clemens. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I was excited, you know, when, when I, I got Yeah, because you're in Louisville, aren't you? I'm in Louisville, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving 
but I made sure when we looked at the house that it was still in your district. I'm honored. <laughs> you see what I go through. Yeah, you know, well, I, hope some, I, I, I hope somebody sees this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then where's your father? Where is he at? I'm wrong. Uh, He's uh, 27104. That's that's you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's over near Forsyth Country Club. Okay, good. Yeah, so he's a voter. Good. He's going to vote for you. Okay, See? well, one of these days, I'll be able to visit him. Yeah, well, you know, we, we can work that up. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. He'd love to see you. He thinks the world of you. Yes. Um, and I publicly have to say thank you so much for coming to my inauguration as president. Ah, that was great. It was great. It was a wonderful time, and, and you being there really meant the world to me and my family. Um, so thank well, you for good. doing that. It was that. good. So I just got elected. You go in, obviously they give you the pen, they probably make an ID badge and all that kind of stuff for you. You go through some sort of orientation. That first time walking on the floor of the Senate, think back. Do you remember that? Was it awesome? They showed you your desk and stuff like that? Yeah, or... it, 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 I mean, it is, a, it, is, it is a bit of an excitement because yeah. you're like, okay, you're representing a lot of people. This what were they really thinking? Serious. That's what I would be thinking. What were they thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 you begin to see the reality of what you're a part of. Um, you're part of representing a constituency and trying to make their lives better. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we're there. We're trying to make people's lives better. That's our goal. Right. Um, now, we have lots of arguments and all kinds of things over the best path, but we're trying to make people's lives better. Well, it is interesting, as you and I have talked about, I mean, you, you have colleagues that are different political parties, colleagues of the sure. same political party. Some that are the same political party you may not agree with, some that are a different political party sure. you agree with. So, I mean, it's all about getting along. Um, what's, a, what's a typical day for you? What, 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 time do you get, what time do you get up? On average, about 6.30 in the morning. All right, so 6.30, you, you, you make a, a, a phenomenal breakfast, right? Uh, take, take coffee and, and, and uh, breakfast in bed to your wife every morning, I'm sure. No. Okay. No, no it's she not. practicing social distancing it's, like okay. my wife is. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Does All she right. make you breakfast every morning? Heck, no, no. My wife invented social distancing probably more than many years ago. <laughs> so what what happens then? Um, so you get up and then you're. So okay, people don't realize this. So you live in Winston Salem, but do you have a? a I have a place. Well, is a hot bunk like with four or five different people, or do you have your own place? Mm -hmm. I got a place in Raleigh. Okay, because I know some representatives, four or five of them, will rent a place and. Um, you know, uh, basically they, that's where they sleep when they're mm -hmm. in session and sure. they come home to their families on weekends and whenever you guys get right. out. So you got a place in Raleigh. So you wake up in Raleigh at six 30, you go to work, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So obviously Carolina knows your schedule and how you like to have your day schedule. What's a, what's a typical day for you? A typical day. I like to do meetings in the mornings as, okay. many, as many as I can. Okay. Um, Right now, we usually have session in the afternoon and committee meetings, some and a few committee meetings in the afternoon as well. Um, so do you have do you have some ten o'clock committee meetings though? Don't you? Yes. Okay. So they give you the schedule enough ahead of time so you can pepper yes. around that. Yes. All right. So, uh, how do you know that uh, the time's up on the meeting? Like when we're meeting, how does how does Carolina let let you know that it's time to get him out of there? Well, she's in control of that. She she knows when to. Knock on the door Knock and say you got another, another meeting. You got another meeting. She she's pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. She, oh, and, I, and, I mean, when you when you come in, she has to know. Yeah. That, okay, he we'll can't be stay. there all day. He yeah. Get, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I've met her. I know she's good at what she does. I'm not questioning. Her. Hey, Caroline. Um, but no. So what? So then, like, you know, do you have a certain time period you give to people? I mean, is it like thirty minutes? It, it just it depends, depends on, the on subject. Yeah, it just depends on what we're working on. Right. I mean, there's no. It's not etched in stone, and I don't turn over an hourglass right. and say, you know. How long? How many meetings per day do you think you have with constituents? So if I'm a constituent, maybe one a day where someone might come in just to meet the senator? It just depends. Okay. I mean, all day. One thing that is unique is your schedule can change dramatically day by day. Oh, it can change right now. You could right. have been here today because sure. the governor needed to meet with right, you. Right, so right. So it can it can change just that quickly. Right. So you have to just kind of be open. Um, it's not etched in stone that it's going to, you know, it's going to be this way. There's some days. Uh, the last time I had a committee meeting um, when I was in Raleigh a week or two ago, um, well, heck, I had a committee meeting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Right. Threw my whole schedule off. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So I Well you, you do know, it for the pay, right? Oh my gosh. I've never worked so hard for thirteen thousand a year. And and you guys are pretty much full time, whether they like to say it or not. That's something that if we could get the teacher's number right, then it'd be then it wouldn't be bad for you guys to pay yourself. But until they can do that, then it I haven't look good even for you. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't even really thought about it. But I do want to get the teachers. Yeah. Um, teachers work hard, and the lion's share of all children are going to public school education. What do you think is going to happen after this coronavirus sequestering with the teacher's salary? Don't you think every parent in town is going to be wondering how they can pay the teachers more so that the kids don't stay home with them again? Might have. Uh, There might be something to that. I don't know. That's the time to strike, teachers. (laughs) That is the time to strike. In about a month, say, hey, we want to put this on the ballot in November. Mm, How about that? Yeah. Um, So you you have meetings. You've got constituents. uh, You know, if I go to D.C. and I see my congressman, he gets me on the floor, stuff, you know, in the, in the not on the floor, in the, mm-hmm. in all that, what, what what can you do for me? I mean, you know, besides give me that pen, when, I mean, do you guys have, I am, like... I, I am going to put it on my list of things give to me do, a break. to get no, you a pen. Do you, no, like, if I come to you as a constituent, do we get to go into the Senate chambers and look around? I mean, do you, is that an that, opportunity for that people? That could be arranged. Right, but is what... I want people to come and meet you and see what I see in you. So, hey, call the Sarah's office up and, you know, what, we can there, um, get you a tour of something or whatever? We we work things out like that. Yeah. And it's, and it's on the case-by-case basis, and the reason I say that is because there's some people that want that and there's some people that don't. Right. A lot of people that do come are coming for whatever their issue is. And They're a concerned. lot of people yeah. uh, have single issue or single concerns that they're things that they're concerned about and they come and see you and they want to know and what you're going to do about their issue um here lately i've gotten a lot of um letters about folks that work in the restaurant industry and you know other service kinds of industry well they're going to be out of work yeah. How do we take and care how of do, how do, Well, and someone want to know what what is going to be done because, you know, they want to survive. Right. You know, everybody wants to survive. So. Well, I know you're never going to forgive me for this, but come see Senator Lowe. Schedule it and come see him. I look forward to and, it. And here's why. I mean, you're, you're going to get to say hi to him, get a picture with him, that type of thing. But there's two freaking phenomenal museums that are within walking distance inside of your office they're free. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's beautiful. We went over there. We met some friends of ours that live that way and, you know, did the whole thing with my daughter. Next time we'll come when you're in session, get a chance to see sure. her, maybe break bread. But it's just, it's, it, this is our legislature. He is there to help us all be better. Yeah. And you can kill me for that later, but I want people to know you mm-hmm. and vote for you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now. I always ask, the, where do you see Winston-Salem going as we get ready to well, end? I mean, this is a city of innovation, and as it's a city of innovation, we have some phenomenal um, educational institutions, um, you know, Winston-Salem State, Wake Forest University, School of the Arts, Salem College, and then Piedmont a phenom- Bible. Uh, Piedmont Bible, then yeah. a phenomenal uh, community college. The, the president over there, she's new. And she's been doing a phenomenal job the last few years, and uh, we're very proud of her. So these are things that folks can take advantage of. Um, Along with that, while we are considered a city of arts and innovation, innovation is, is growing. And hopefully jobs surrounding that innovation will be growing. And people will have access to those jobs. Um, I think that's something that's just extremely important, uh, that people will be able to get training if they need it and other kinds of things so they can, you know, have access to these new jobs that are coming available. Well, we were talking, and, you know, there used to be several larger companies in town, and, of course, we've lost some. Some are Mm -hmm. here in, in different capacities. And... And, you know, as I ask our guests different things, one of the things that, that I always say is, is I think I like where we're going in the sense of let's be the incubator. I know that the bigger companies, um, you know, we can go out and try and get some of those. I mean, having Caterpillar here, you know, bringing them into the marketplace, sure. and I know they're bringing some more people in for some another division. Um, but 
I would rather have the place where, gosh, if I'm thinking about starting a business, an entrepreneur, I'd rather have those people coming to Winston-Salem and saying, hey, this is the best place to start a business. This is, you know, they're, they're job friendly. They're, you know, we've got that trained workforce through everything Forsyth Tech is doing and, and, and things like that. Um, I'm okay with that if we can bring our citizens up to have, as you talked about, jobs, opportunity, and growth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to have it. And I think that I think that we, um, I'm hoping that we are a city that will be looked upon at as, that's open for business. Right. That people can find success, that people can find a good place to live, to work, and to play. Mm -hmm. um, I think those kinds of things are important, that we have a good, um, we have a new superintendent of schools, and I think she's going to do a bang-up job. Right. Um, but to have a good education system, to have a be at a place that's good for small business as well as some of your, your larger corporate entities, mm -hmm. um, those are the kinds of things we're looking for in this city and to continue to produce because you you want to be a city where everybody has an opportunity to grow and to be successful. That's the kind of city we want Winston-Salem to continue to be and be known for mm -hmm. because there there are some people that are, that are yet struggling and those that are struggling, we want to find creative ways to help them to grow as well. So. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for being here. I want to tell everybody, go to Paul Lowe for NC. That's Paul Lowe for NC.com. And it is F-O-R, not the cute number thing. And then um, if, you, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with the senator, uh, learn more about uh, how you can help out as we go through the things going on now or just around, uh, you know, because he's a community organizer. Don't um, say it like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, call Call Carolina in his office at 919-733-5620. That's 919-733-5620. And, and all I can say is thank you. Thank you for serving the citizens of Forsyth County as you have. Um, thanks for being my friend. You've always been kind to me and, and made me uh, uh, feel like that I'm, I'm talking to someone that's actually listening when we come and talk to you about real estate stuff. And uh, I, I wish you the best. As I told you, I'm voting for you. And I hope others would, Thank too. You. Thank um, you. So uh, if you would, please go on YouTube and uh, like our channel and also, um, uh, you know, subscribe. It only helps us out as we continue to bring you more guests that um, uh, have a, a tie here to the Camel City. Um, I'm John McPherson with my guest, uh, Senator Paul Lowe. You've just uh, watched another episode of Camel City Chat. <laughs> <laughs>